Now here's another one. This is by Lahle Cyrus. who says, Mecca is described in the Quran and Hadith as having a valley, a stream, a river, ruins, trees, grass, fruits, olive leaf trees, and mountains overlooking the Kaaba. None of this correct is correct due to the location and the climate. So the question is, where is this place described in the Quran and the Hadiths? Well, now the answer, I don't know if Lahle Cyrus has been looking at my videos because I did answer this. I've been answering this for, my goodness, almost three years now. And the answer would be, of course, Petra. All these locations do fit Petra. They don't fit Mecca, but they do fit Petra. Why? Well, let me just give you seven reasons. Let me give you seven reasons right now why. They fit Petra and not Mecca. First and foremost, as we've gone through, and I don't want time to do it right now, look at the five stages of the Hajj. The five stages of the Hajj that are now currently exist in Mecca. Uh, if you look at those five stages, every one of those five stages you can find in Petra. Even more so, better, and also more realistic. Let me, I, rather than go through all five, let me just give you one example. The two mountains of Safa and Marwa that supposedly... Hagar ran back and forth to find water for Ishmael when she was looking for water for the two of them. These are two mountains, according to the traditions, the 9th and 10th century traditions. Now, if they are mountains, then they should be mountains. But take a look at Mecca today and go and see where Safa and Marwa are. They are there's a corridor between them. They're right next to the Kaaba. You can see them. Here's a picture. I'm going to show you the Safa and Marwa. But take a look at what's there to commemorate those two mountains. They're just rocks. Look at these. These are just large rocks maybe 15, maybe 20 feet high. Mountains? Those are mountains? No, they're nothing more than facsimiles of mountains. So where are these mountains? Well, they're in Petra. Petra do have the Safa and the Marwa. Here's a picture, one right here. So the mountains that are there in the traditions fit Petra better than they do Mecca. And I don't want to go through all the other four. You can see my video on that as I unpack it. Number two, Petra is in a valley and did have olive trees and all kinds of vegetation referred to it in the Quran and the traditions. Petra would only fit that because we know that olive trees do only exist around the Mediterranean, much further north. You can get olive trees today down there, but they've been all transplanted down there. They are That's something new that we're able to do now. But back you know, the natural place for olives is up in the, in the Mediterranean world. What's more, take a look at Mecca. It does not have waterways. It does not have streams. It does not have rivers going through it, and it does not have wells. It has one well, the Zum Zum well. If you look at all the water that comes to Mecca today, it has to be transported in from other areas because it does not, it has not have a natural water basin. Unlike Petra, look at all these. Look, I'm just showing you them. Take a look at all these waterways that are there. Beautifully carved, and that's why it was, ri it was rich with water. It did have wells. You can see the wells there in the picture, and of course, because of that, it had all kinds of vegetation. Of course, number three is the waterways that go with it. So that's two and three together. Number four, Petra was on all the trade routes, north, east, and west. And when you look at the trade routes, and this is something that Patricia Crone found out, this is something she found out in her studies back in the 1980s. Um, we're talking about we're, we're talking about 40 years ago she knew this. When you look at the trade routes, you can see all the trade routes, the major international trade routes were first of all maritime, and here's the picture of where they went. Just follow the arrows there, right up through across the Arabian Sea, up to the Red Sea, up to the north. Or they went east and west, or they went north. Now, what's interesting, uh, over land, all the trade routes went either north, west, or east. But on land, they never went south. And what, tr where did they, where was the seat of all this trade? Well, Petra was the seat of all this trade. So Petra was the one that controlled the trade. The Nabataeans were known as traders. The Nabataeans were amazing traders. They traded as far as China and as in far as India. They were able to get across the deserts like no one else could. I've done a whole series on this. I don't want to uh, re reiterate what I've already said. So it was fascinating that the trade went north and east and west, but it did not go south by land. The only trade that went south was always by boat because of the Red Sea. There it is. Look at on the picture. You can see the Red Sea. So when you look at trade, you can see Mecca had nothing to do with the trade. Petra did. Number five, when you look at the Quran and when you look at the Arabic in the Quran, you will see that the Arabic that is there is not from the area of Mecca. It is Nabataean Aramaic. Nabataean Aramaic is, was only used way up in the north. It was used in where the Nabataeans were. Where is the Nabate Where did the Nabataeans exist? In Petra. Something as simple as the Tar Marputa or the Alaf Maksura 
or the definite article. Uh, those that you find right through the Quran do not exist in Sabaic Arabic. The Sabaic Arabic that was used in the 7th century in that part of Arabia did not have those endings. They do in the Quran we have today, suggesting very clearly from Al-Jalad and all his research from 2018 that the Arabic that we use in the Quran today is from much further north, from the Nabataean Aramaic, which is Petra again. So Petra fits again because of the Quran, uh, the Arabic that's in the Quran. Number six, even the name Allah or the goddesses in chapter 53, verse 19 of the Quran, Alat and Aluza and Almanat. Look at those three goddesses. Alat and Aluza are actually the same goddess. Alat is the generic name for Aluza, the formal name of the goddess, who is the wife of Ilaha, who is Allah, the generic name for Dushara, the god of the Nabataeans. Again, Petra, again, way up north. So even the god that they use in the Quran and the two goddesses, well, actually three goddesses, because Manat is from no. Medina Sali. Medina Sali is a Nabataean city. And that's why even the goddesses that are in the Satanic verses are from much further north, from Petra or Medina Sali. So there you can see it. That makes it in the wrong place, it puts it in the wrong place. And then number seven, the last thing, and that is, of course, the Kiblis. This is probably the most important part. When you look at Dan Gibson's material, when you look at all the stuff that he came up with, Gibson showed over and over again that all of the Kiblis, all of the mosques, up until 706, bar none, were all facing Petra. Not one was facing Mecca in the 7th century. They only begin to face Mecca from 727, which is the 8th century. Too late, because Muhammad died in 632, which is the 7th century. <laughs> so you can see, if you want to look at the five stages of the Hajj, if you want to look at the valleys and the olives and the vegetation, if you want to look at the waterways and the wells, when you look at the trade routes, when you look at the Nabataean Arabic that is used in the Quran, when you look at the names like Allah and Alat and Al-Manat and Al-Uzza, when you look at the Qiblas, if you put them all together, all those seven reasons, they all fit Petra. So it has nothing to do with Mecca. All of this that we know, that we use today in Islam, that Muslims use, that they are dependent on, comes from much further north, not from Mecca. I hope that makes it clear. Bless you, Lale. Cirrus, for your question. Great one. I hope you have answered it. This is Jay then. Over and out.